Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 4 of Red Odyssey, where we're trying to colonize the Jupiter system. In today's video, we are finally, finally heading out to Jupiter with our uh, expeditionary vessel, Morning Star, which I've named because Jupiter is a morning star. So here we're launching the crew Teal, which is going to be our lander, or landing on all of the different moons. You see, I made a slight miscalculation in our launch orbit and didn't raise our apoapsis high enough, so we ended up dipping back into the atmosphere and getting drag and all of that stuff, which isn't the most ideal of situations. But here we are with the dramatic music and docking with the station. And for once, it's actually a pretty okay docking, pretty nice. Right now, we are decommissioning the crew arrow, so to speak, because it has served its purpose. It's a last generation ship, which is replaced by the crew mallard, named after a duck. Um, <laughs> fun fact. With our very stable and safe re-entry profile, we're, um, we're deploying our parachutes, and we touch down safely with a slight burn of our engines, with 1.6% fuel remaining. How nice. We landed pretty close to the launch pad. I was sort of aiming for it, but we didn't quite make it. But as you can see, right now we are launching the Crew Teal again, the second lander. And with that change in song, we have a near miss, actually. We almost hit the gravity ring of our station. Actually, what should I name the station? I haven't decided and I can't come up with a name. So just leave a comment if you have a good one, I guess. This is the crew Mallard. Uh, we launched the same ship last episode, I guess, in the sneak peek, episode three. But um, yeah, I'll explain the situation. So this colony ship is the new one. This is the one you saw in last week's video, which didn't quite have enough fuel to get to Jupiter or do anything for that matter. It, it was a bit too heavy, it had too much extra stuff on there, so um, this is a 10,000 times sped up footage of the colony ship. Yikes. Wait, we're, we're not even at Jupiter yet? So this is why we're building our new colony ship, and right now we're launching the rovers, which are or rover landers at least, with the ugliest rocket I've ever built, quite frankly. Docking to the station, again, docking the second one, that one took forever. Pretending it didn't take that long for me to dock with one thing. There we go. And her colony ship, or expeditionary ship, I should call it, is ready and undocking from the unnamed station. You need to name it. Please give me name ideas. I don't know what to name stuff anymore. Whoa. That's a lot of fuel tanks. So, we're ready to go and head off to Jupiter with our 24 crew members aboard Morningstar and deploying those solar panels and activating the habitation modules. And... Here we are, zooming out on the map, and we get our first view of the ACSS system. I'm playing with a custom planet pack, actually complete solar system, or ACSS, and it adds a bunch of planets, actually. So we're targeting Jupiter, we're going to be heading to Ganymede, and after getting into the launch window, our colony ship is ready to go. Reaching the transfer node, I guess, and we have about a 1,200 meter per second burn, and you get a nice view of those stretched out engines, and of course, the mysteriously connected side ships. It's a selling point. Cutting to the map view in just a second, you can see we're well along on our burn. And there we are with just a quick save. Of course, don't want to lose any progress. Just 900 meters per second to go, and we've reached the edge of that transfer. We actually have to split this up into two burns because it's such a large burn to get to Jupiter. Jupiter is very far away, and I completely underestimated how much fuel we need to get there with our previous V1 colony ship design. Nearly there, in solar orbit already, our trajectory is 
has escaped the Earth, and we have an encounter. So we're fine-tuning our encounter right now with Jupiter. We're actually going to set our orbits to the innermost moons, I guess. So we're actually aiming for Ganymede, as I've mentioned before, because it is the most similar to our moon on Earth, which we practiced or tested our equipment on last episode, or two episodes ago, actually. Episode 2. This ship actually has a fully fledged gravity ring. Whoa, it spins. Pretty exciting. It took a long time to design, so feel free to bask in its majestic. Pretending nothing happened, we are spinning up our cryopods, which are housing our astronauts in, uh, I don't know, cryosleep or status. So, um, they use in my rules, which I just made up to make stuff more difficult for myself. Uh, the, every astronaut uses water and oxygen, so that means we have to bring less of it for the mission. And exiting Earth's sphere of influence, we have a surprise! The flat textures turned off, making our ship look horrendous. Not really. It just takes a bit of getting used to. But with this new song, which I actually used in my one of my favorite videos, my Venus Return Mission video, um, yeah, I really like this song. So the reason why flat textures turned off when we entered the sun's sphere of influence, because I didn't change the shadow intensity value for the sun. But more impressingly, we're getting our first views of Jupiter. Several weeks of planning and execution went into this mission, and it's all accumulating in this moment. We're lowering our orbit and capturing into Jupiter orbit, I guess. And there we go. Now we're going to correct our orbit to intersect with the Jupiter's moons. Ganymede, which is its largest moon actually. Gan we chose Ganymede as our initial exploration target, I guess, because Ganymede is most similar to Earth's moon out of all of them, and um, it has the same gravity and whatnot, making it a very ideal candidate because we tested all our technology on Earth's moon in episode 2. Capturing into Ganymede's sphere of influence, uh, there's a slight problem with Ganymede. Ganymede does not allow for flat textures. There's just something wrong with the config files. So, uh, at least for me. But what point would there be visiting Ganymede without actually landing on it? So we're using the crew Teal to land, and I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of the video without my voice, because I think it makes for a better effect. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. That is a take. That is a... Ow.